Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm here today to tell you a story about the Met Office and the Climate Model Evaluation Community. This is a story of collaborations, challenges and conversations. And by the end of the story, you will know what I believe makes a successful open source community based on my experiences of working with an international open source community for the past two years. There are three characters to introduce in this story, and the first one is me. My name is Emma Hogan, and I'm a Senior Scientific Software Engineer, or SSE, at the Met Office. The Met Office uses the name SSE instead of RSE, but they are equivalent. I've spent the last 15 years working in industry as an RSE, nine of which have been at the Met Office. I contributed a case study for the RSE website last year, so you can read more about me there. Alternatively, please feel free to say hello to me either via the RSE Slack or during the next break. So the second character in to introduce is the Earth System Model Evaluation Tool, or ESMVAL tool. ESMVAL tool is an open source community driven tool that enables reproducible climate model evaluation and analysis. Climate model evaluation involves comparing hundreds of years of climate model data with observational data sets, then calculating and plotting metrics which summarize how well the model performs. ESM Valtor handles all the steps required to do this, including finding and fixing the required data, processing the data, and calculating and plotting the metrics. ESM Valtor has been in development for over 10 years, and the international ESM Valtor community consists of both scientists and RSEs. There are over 180 members across over 60 international institutes. Even Boris Johnson has heard of ESM Valtool. ESM Valtool was used to create many figures for the sixth assessment report prepared, prepared by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. This, this report provides high quality and reliable scientific information about climate change and is key to international climate assessment and negotiations. One of these figures was included in the 11 slides used to teach Boris Johnson about climate change. So I wanted to give you a little bit more information about the ESM Valtor character, specifically about its community and how the community has evolved over time. The first ESM Valtor workshop took place in March 2015. The ESM Valtor workshops provide a space for the community to get together to discuss ESM Valtor developments, as well as participate in coding sessions. Now workshops take place twice a year. In February 2017, ESM Valtor was made open source via a GitHub repository. This enabled all the expected benefits of open source. For example, enabling users to improve and contribute to the software they use, improve their technical and people skills, and be part of a community, which is the focus of my story today. A couple of years later, the ESM Valtor Code of Conduct was introduced, signaling their commitment to creating a welcoming and safe environment for everyone and explicitly expressing the fundamental shared values of the ESM Valtool community. In March 2020, work began on the ESM Valtool tutorial. Two of the reasons why the ESM Valtool tutorial is beneficial to the community is firstly to help new users get started with using ESM Valtool, and secondly, to help new developers contribute to ESM Valtool. By improving the experience of new users and developers, they will hopefully continue to use and um, use and contribute to ESM Valtool. Okay, so the first monthly community meeting took place on Zoom in May 2020. Every month, the community meet for one hour, and anyone with an interest in ESM Valtool is welcome to join and ask questions. At the start of each meeting, everyone gets one minute to introduce themselves and say what they'll be working on and or what they would like help with over the next month. It's a fantastic way to engage with the community. A new discussion is opened for each monthly community meeting where we share agenda item ideas and document our discussions. By making the monthly community meeting notes public and accessible, anybody who is unable to attend the meeting can easily discover what was discussed. And in addition, anybody can read past archives to get up to speed and participate. In September 2021, a new community repository was created to share community related discussions and announcements. For example, announcing and documenting the monthly community meetings and workshops. 
This repository was created to separate the community related notifications from other notifications from the high traffic ESM Val tool repository to encourage members to subscribe to the community related notifications. While on the topic of documentation, I wanted to highlight ESM Val tools community specific documentation, both within the community standards section under the insights tab on GitHub and also within ESM Val tools comprehensive documentation hosted via read the docs. For example, ESM Valtool has a contributing file, which links to this page in the ESM Valtool documentation. This page details the types of contributions that can be made, and I wanted to point out that the ESM Valtool community value contributions beyond typical code changes. For example, documentation improvements, performing reviews, and outreach. This page also explains how to contribute to the community via both GitHub issues and discussions. These contribution guidelines make it easy for anyone to get started and contribute to ESM Valtool. In addition, ESM Valtool have documented the answers to frequently asked questions, which provides a route to finding answers quickly. This helps to improve the experience of those using ESM Valtool and complements the ESM Valtool tutorial previously mentioned. So all the things I've mentioned so far supports my belief that ESM Valtool has a successful open source community. So now to introduce the third character in this story, the Met Office. The Met Office is the National Meteorological Service for the UK. We provide critical weather services and world leading climate science, helping you make better decisions to stay safe and thrive. At the Met Office, we use bespoke in-house tools to perform climate model evaluation. Unfortunately, the process of adding new code to our bespoke in-house tools is slow and scientists find it hard. As a result, there has been little enhancement of the scientific capability of these tools for many years. In addition, the, the use of bespoke in-house tools acts as a barrier to collaboration on climate model evaluation code. This has led to us missing opportunities to benefit from science developed by the external climate model evaluation community. So now onto the collaborations part of the story. When we were looking for a tool to replace our bespoke in-house tools, we knew we wanted to adopt an open source tool so we could collaborate with the wider climate model evaluation and analysis community. We also had scientific, technical and community requirements. For example, we wanted to adopt a tool that is actively developed by more than one core developer. We wanted to adopt a tool that can accept contributions by non-core developers. And we wanted to adopt a tool that delivers releases frequently. So going back to a slide I showed previously, ESM Valtool has a core team of developers. And it was clear from looking um, at the contributors section under the insights tab on GitHub the multiple core developers were actively working on ESM Valtool. And for those observant people, um, just in case you were wondering why there was an apparent decrease in the number of commits since 2020, um, this was when ESM Valtool version 2.0.0 was released and some of the working practices changed, uh, including moving to squash merges. So our analysis confirmed that ESM Valtool is actively developed by more than one core developer. As mentioned previously, the ESM Valtool community encourages contributions from everyone. So our analysis confirmed that ESM Valtool can accept contributions by non-core developers. ESM Valtool also aims to deliver three releases per year. There have been two releases so far in 2023. So our analysis confirmed that ESM Valtool delivers releases frequently. So in 2020, we completed our analysis to support the strategic commitment to adopt ESM Valtool. We are still very new to the ESM Valtool community. I attended my first community meeting two years ago this month, and we are in the process of replacing our bespoke in-house tools with ESM Valtool. So all the things I've mentioned so far about why I believe ESM Valtool has a successful open source community enabled me to successfully engage with the ESM Valtool community when I first joined and for the last two years. Of course, it's not just the Met Office that benefits um, from us joining the ESM Valtool community. The ESM Valtool community also benefits from additional contributions from us. 
We have made multiple contributions to ESM Valtor and the community since joining two years ago, including hosting a hybrid workshop last October. Many members of the community joined us in person at our headquarters, and it was great to finally meet everyone face to face. Now for the challenges part of the story. The first challenge I wanted to share with you is a Met Office specific challenge. So we at the Met Office would depend on ES and Valtor for mission critical climate model development. So we wanted to have some influence over the strategic direction of ES and Valtor. However, we were unsure how this would work with an open source tool. Thankfully, there was a shared understanding that governance would be important for the sustainability of the ES and Valtor community. So we facilitated the development of this governance structure. The ESM Valtor Consortium Agreement, which details this governance structure, is currently undergoing review. The ESM Valtor Steering Group is the ultimate decision-making body. The steering group is responsible for setting the future direction of ESM Valtor and ensuring its sustainable development. Any institute is welcome to join the steering group but they must commit a minimum of one full-time equivalent or FTE of effort to ESM Valtor development. The Met Office commits to providing this effort, which allows us to influence the strategic direction of ESM Valtor. The Met Office is one of six of the current members of the ESM Valtor steering group. The formation of the governance structure enabled us to handle this first Met Office specific challenge. I also wanted to highlight the ESM Valtor team, since they are, in my opinion, part of the reason the ESM Valtor community is a successful open source community. There are three ESM Valtor teams, the scientific lead team, the technical lead team, and the user engagement team. These teams each have a specific purpose and focus, provide a central contact point, and all engage with each other and the steering group. Each of these ESM Valtool teams have a corresponding team in GitHub, so they can be easily mentioned in relevant issues and discussions. Each ESM Valtool team contains around 10 people, although not all of them are active, and there is some overlap. For example, I am a member of both the tech lead team and the user engagement team. So I thought it would be worthwhile to share some general considerations for the membership of ESM Valtool teams, just in case any of you are considering implementing a similar governance structure. So the steering group oversees the membership of the different ESM Valtool teams, and new members to an ESM Valtool team can be nominated by the steering group or by other ESM Valtool teams. New members are appointed by the steering group, and members are removed after more than one year of inactivity. So now onto the communications part of the story. I wanted to highlight how the tech lead team can communicate effectively. So due to the distributed nature of the community, tooling plays an important part when communicating. The tech lead team communicates using multiple different channels for different purposes. So the tech lead team have a mailing list, which is used for general discussions and as a contact point for those external to the tech lead team. The tech lead team communicate via monthly meetings on Zoom, where upcoming technical work is discussed. For the last 10 months, the tech lead team have been trialing Slack to discuss day-to-day -day technical work related to managing issues and PRs and coordinating testing and reviews. And for the last few months, the tech lead team have been using HackMD to write up the notes from the monthly meetings. So another challenge we faced recently as a community was related to our responsiveness to queries from new users. There was tension within the community related to who should answer questions, since not one person or team has all the skills to answer the diverse range of queries from our users. We recognised as a community that we wanted to do better, and it was discussed at a monthly community meeting. It was agreed that the user engagement team since their purpose is to engage with the users, would acknowledge and triage incoming issues and discussions as soon as possible after they, are after they are submitted to help increase engagement. The user engagement team would redirect the query to the most appropriate team or individual 
by tagging the team or individual on the issue or discussion. We have been doing this for the past six months and it has been going well so far. We hope this will further improve our community and new users will be more enthusiastic about participating. I believe this challenge was made easier due to the existence of the ESM Valtool teams with their specific purpose and focus and highlights one of the benefits of the governance structure. So to summarize, here are the things in no particular order that I believe make a successful open source community based on my experiences of working with an international open source community for the past two years. A successful open source community communicates openly and transparently using tools that work for the community. A successful open source community provides the community with a place to congregate, congregate both online via regular community meetings, Slack, a mailing list or GitHub discussions, or in person such as workshops, so the community can help each other. A successful open source community has a code of conduct and commits to creating a welcoming and safe environment for everyone. A successful open source community documents all the things, for example, contribution guidelines, FAQs, meeting notes, all to enable the community to quickly get the context they need. Related to this, a successful open source community maintains a tutorial to support both users and developers. A successful open source community is responsive by acknowledging queries early to help increase engagement. A successful open source community considers a governance or leadership structure. And a successful open source community continually improves by reflecting as a community on how to become more effective. But don't just take my word for it. The open source guides, which were created by GitHub, along with input from those in open source communities, provide community best practice and cover many of the topics I've shared here. I hope you enjoyed my story of collaborations, challenges, and conversations, and I will leave you with what I believe makes a successful open source community based on my experiences of working with an international open source community for the past two years. Thank you. Right, so questions. Um, so the first, the first question we have there, um, do you have a community manager or similar role? If so, how are they funded? If not, who organizes the community calls and how are they funded? Um, so we don't have a formal community manager to my knowledge. Um, so I can't say anything about the funding. I guess people who contribute to this are funded through projects that they work on that use ESM Valtel. Um, and so RSEs will apply for funding. At the Met Office, we've got funding through government for doing the climate model evaluation. Um, so that's sort of how that works. Um, the community calls are organized. They were organized by a single person um, for, I think actually since they started in 2020. Um, and then um, they, they just wanted a bit of a break from that quite rightly. Um, and so I think the user engagement team have actually taken on board um, the, the responsibility of organizing the community calls um, and we're actually in the process of like changing over uh, how that works. Um, but yeah, we're thinking about doing it on a, on a rotation basis. Um, so to share the responsibility across the user engagement team rather than it falling on a single person to, to continue to organize the calls. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next question, when choosing to adopt ESM Val tool, how did you evaluate that it suitably replaces internal tools? Okay, so when um, we perform this evaluation, we basically created this massive spreadsheet with a bunch of questions that related to um, our internal tools um, and what we needed. Um, and then we had a list of tools kind of across the top and we kind of filled, filled out this massive spreadsheet um, against each one. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything more to add to that. But yeah, like I said, we've got sort of like the, we had technical stuff. Um, so like obviously technical stuff like is it easy to install? I say easy. That's a really bad uh, kind of requirement word to use. But we had it phrased better than that. Um, and uh yeah, kind of like, is it, was it configurable? You know, we had all these kind of questions that are sort of bespoke tools 
worked in that way and we kind of wanted to replace I mean mostly like for like but you know we were open to some differences but yeah we had a big list basically we just worked through them right okay um we'll skip the other one for a moment we'll come back to that in a minute uh, so what's what software was involved in ESM Val tool can you tell us quickly we've just got about a minute or two to finish off um assuming that they mean what I guess what packages ESM Valtool uses. I mean, yeah. ESM Valtool's yeah. um, mostly written in Python. Um, I'm gonna, this is a, possibly a longer answer than, because I haven't gone into much detail of ESM Valtool, but there's kind of like an infrastructure to ESM Valtool and there's this concept of recipes, which are YAML files that scientists use to basically run, run the code they want to run. Um, and then there's this concept of diagnostics, which are, contain code uh, to like do some processing and create the plots. And the diagnostics can be written in Python or R or gosh, um, I've forgotten all of the languages now, um, but there's there's a bunch of languages. Uh, the Met Office were interested in Python, which is why I only remember that one. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, in Python, um, ESM Val tool is based on a tool called Iris, um, which is uh, a tool we develop at the Met Office. Um, it's a kind of generic tool to someone in the audience who can answer this question better than me. Um, <laughs> uh, to, it enables you to um, load model data in a generic way. Uh, it's like a, a generic data model, basically. Yeah. Um, and so ESM Val tool uses that. Okay. Um, I and guess if people want to know more, they can come. There's come loads of other packages come and talk to you as well. Yeah. yeah. So great. Okay. Right. So before we thank Emma again, did you take any of the cat pictures? Uh, <laughs> no, unfortunately, I didn't. No, they're all they're all yeah online, pre-available <laughs> cat pictures. Okay. Thank you for a very interesting talk, Emma. Thank, thank you. you.